My name is Leroy Barber, and it's great to be here. Uh, I am excited. My first time uh, at this event, so uh, I'm looking for some great things to happen. Uh, but a couple ground rules. I'm, I'm going to be up here five times, right? So uh, that's, that's a lot. You're going to have to listen to me. Sorry, bro. That's just... So, but I don't like just, you know, me up here just talking, right? Uh, and you just sitting there just looking at me. What I like is a little engagement. So uh, we are going to talk back to one another, all right? So uh, in, in a tradition I grew up in, that usually happens through an amen, right? Uh, anybody want to say amen? Can we? Okay, very cool, very cool. Now, if you don't like amen and you want to, like, uh, you know, update that a little bit, you know, a little new school on it, you can say, yeah, go, bro, right? Uh, or, yeah, I'm with that. Like, whatever you want to do to affirm this conversation, all right? All right? So, uh, that, like, those are the ground rules. Now, we are on a time constraint. We're on time limits here. We got to get through a whole lot of stuff. Y'all got a lot to do this weekend. But uh, uh, if I don't think we're getting this Bible learning down, I'm going to keep going, all right? I'm going to ignore that clock wherever it is if we're not clocking with one another, right? And the way I know that's happening is like you saying amen or you keep going, I got that, right? Like some, something, all right? It's going to be a long weekend if, if, <laughs> if we don't get this together, folks, all right? Uh, Leroy Barber again. And uh, I am, I'm originally from Philadelphia uh, and lived in Atlanta for a long time and lived out in the Northwest down in Portland for the last six years. So I'm fairly new uh, to the Northwest lifestyle and, and area. So y'all, thank you. Appreciate that. You can't talk back to me enough. I'm telling you, right? Like, like keep talking, right? Um, uh, uh, the the um, next, next four or five times that I talk, we're going to work through this scripture that was read uh, and pull out a couple things. The big thought I'd like to put out for, uh, for this, this next few days is this idea of take nothing, right? Uh, and I want to dive harder into that specific part of what we're talking about tomorrow morning, right? Uh, and I want to build up to it, and then uh, we're going we're gonna to see what we do with it after that. So, so there'll be a couple. couple Today, we're going to talk about power. This evening, we're going to talk about evil. Uh, tomorrow morning is when I want to like, dive into this idea of take nothing. Right? So I want you to come to my notes in the morning, but I want you ready All right, for tomorrow morning. And then, and then, and then, then tomorrow evening, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about like, like how we mature and grow up. What is the response after that? And then, then, then Monday morning, what we gonna do with it, right? Like how we gonna leave this place? Now, question. Que I I do need a timer somewhere because I'm a preacher and I will just keep going. So. Uh, somebody wave hands when time is up. Some, uh, uh, all right, you got it? All right, cool. Um, so uh, 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 let's look at the scripture um, and let's dive in a little bit uh, to uh, this, afternoon, this afternoon's um, topic. We read Luke chapter 9. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to curse diseases. And, to set, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony is, is against them. So they went, they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Right? So this, this first part I want to concentrate on, just a little piece of this. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority. Right. How many people in here, just, just trying to get to the, how many people grew up, like you've been in church since you were a, a tiny kid, a baby, right? Your parent, oh man, 
All right. How many, how many, like, you know, you got there maybe 10, 11 years old, a little bit later, all right? And how many people just, you just trying to figure this whole craziness out? This is your first. All right. Okay, cool. All right. So I, I, I grew up in church. So um, uh, I, I've been around church all of my life and, 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 and learned how to act in church and all those kinds of things. Uh, I know y'all all know how to act in church, uh, but uh, I want to give you permission today uh, to, to speak out, to ask questions when you get in your small groups, to dive into this stuff uh, as best you can over the next few days. This idea of power is what I want to start with. Um, and, 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 and power, uh, the definition I'll use is, is this one, uh, to direct or influence behavior of others or the course of events, right? This idea of power to direct or influence the, the behavior of others or the course of events. Now, power can be talked about in a lot of different ways. Uh, if you're in, in the sports or football or those kind of things, you know, there's like, there's like power runners, right, uh, in football. Those people who like, they change the course of events because they go right at somebody and bowl them over, right? That's power, right? That's a power runner, right? Uh, if you watch tennis, you know, Serena Williams has a power serve, right? Nothing you can do about it, right? When it's coming at you, it's coming at you, right? Uh, and it changes, it takes control, right? So this idea of control, right? Something uh, seemingly that you, we can acquire, right? We can get power. We can acquire power. This, I like to say, is kind of this earthly aspect of power. This idea that you have and I have an advantage over another person, right? Uh, uh, you heard, you have, you, any, who heard the term money is power, right? Uh, good credit is power, right? You got good credit, you got some power, right? Uh, 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 you, uh, power clothes, right? Power suit. I'm not, I don't have a power suit on right now. But. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just dressed, but, but some people, when they walk in the room, it's like, dang, right? <laughs> right? Like, like, that represents power, right? They just change the, they change the standard in the room, right? When they walk in, you're like, woo, I gotta go change, right? <laughs> uh, 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 like, uh, this, this idea, though, right, is that seems like something we can acquire, right? Like, I can build up my credit, right? I can, I can, I, I, I can, I can, I can dress it up a little bit more. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to come in my power stuff, right? Uh, uh, like we can acquire, we can get these things. But it seems like in this scripture, something different happens with power. And that's what I want us to dive into right now and in your small groups later. What is this difference that something we can acquire, right? Something we can dress up for, something we can get, something we can prepare for, something we can do, right? Like I can, I can become an athlete that's powerful. Or I can become like, like something we can do versus what we see happening here in Scripture. That Jesus just gives them power, right? The scripture starts with, and Jesus called his boys together, right? And said, hey, here's some power and authority, right? Like, what's that? What's that look like? What is that? that you ever, like, if you think about that scripture, right? Jesus calling his folks together, his crew, right? And saying, all right, now, uh, uh, here's some power and authority. What's that look like? Right? I'm going to drop some power on you right now. Here you go, shorty. Here's some power, right? Right? What is that? What, what was that? What did he give them? What did, what did Jesus give them? You ever wonder, like, what does that mean? Right? I, I grew up in church all my life. I'm like, what, what, is, what, what happened there? Because if he's giving it out, I want some of it. Right? I want some of that stuff, whatever Jesus is giving out. 
Did he hand them something? Like, was there some rock or stone? Like, you know, uh, 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 how did they get it from him? Like, did he bless them? Like, did he, you know, hear some power? Like, I don't know. Right? There you go, right? Like, yeah, exactly. The infinity stone, right? Here you go, right? This, 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 this uh, square that they, that they, Jesus said, here, hand it over, right? Ah. Uh, what was it? Like, what did... And it seemed like he trusted them with this thing. If Jesus came in today and said, hey, here's some power for you. Trust you with something. What is that? That's what we want to dive down into. Could be the Holy Spirit. But what we want to... Well, today, let's, 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 let's think about that. Let's kick that around with one another. What was this thing, bro? Huh? Sis, what was this thing? Here's the other part of this. They didn't ask for it. Right? Jesus called them together and said, hey, here's this thing. Power and authority. You got it. Like, nah, I'm cool, bro. I'm cool, Jesus. I'm good. I don't, I don't want that. That sounds like responsibility, right? That sounds like, like I can't go play my video games. I'm going to have to do something different. I, I, I want to go play some stuff here, right? They didn't ask for it, right? There was something about it that Jesus gave them that was life-changing, that they didn't ask for. And here's the thing also, that he gave them power and it wasn't for themselves. Right? You know, so if I give you some power, I don't even talk about you, if somebody gave me some power, who's that for? Me. Right? Come on, be, y'all don't act like y'all ain't don't think. Come on. Don't give me that. I don't care you grew up in church. Somebody gave you some power. You know it's for you. Right? Like, dude, I got power. You go do what I say. Right? That's the power we can acquire. But Jesus seems to give out some power that's not for them. And what does that mean? What does that look like? If Jesus gives power power and authority for something outside of us, then what do we use that power and authority for? Majority of hands in here said you grew up in church. Jesus has given you something. You've been using it for yourself. You've been using it to kind of make your own space create your own crew, right? Your own boys, your own girls, right? We're going to rock it. We got our thing going. There seems to be something different about the power that Jesus gives. Like, I didn't ask you for this, Jesus. So why are you giving me this? It's the question on the table. We seem to use power differently, don't we? For us to call the shots. If I had power, I ain't losing another game of horse. <laughs> right? If I had the power, my sons, who are both taller than me now, right? And they, they can move a little faster, but I ain't never going to lose another game to them boys. <laughs> we use it to win. To persuade dominate. Here's another way to create systems that make us superior. Right? If we got the power, if I got the power, black men going to run this thing. You know what I'm saying? Right? 
Y'all need to come on now. This is, we got we to have to talk through this thing. Jesus brings a different lens to power and what it means. Third thing. Jesus gives power to people who didn't ask for it and who aren't qualified to have it. Right? If you read, if you, like, if you take some time to read all this, man, these, these disciples weren't qualified to have nothing. Right? Like, like there's, there's, you can read parts of the scripture where they sit before, they sit before a court, and the court is mad, court is asking a question, who are these ignorant folks in front of us? Right? They weren't qualified. They were fishermen. They were outcasts. There was a bunch of women around, right? Like, like you aren't qualified to have this power, but Jesus gives power to those who didn't even ask for it and who weren't qualified. How does that relate to you? You young people ain't qualified to have nothing. You heard that before, didn't you? Yeah. Right? I remember growing up in church, wanting to do something, wanting to change something, thinking this stuff was all crazy and whack. Like, this is boring. This is stupid. Why are we doing this? I got some ideas. And they say, shut up, boy. You don't know what you're talking about. Some of that I deserve. Let's, let's keep that balanced. <laughs> Let's keep that balance, right? God has given you power, young people. God, you didn't ask for it, many of you, but he's still giving it. What is it for? And why do you qualify for it? Here's a couple things to leave with, and we're going to go to our groups. The qualifiers that I think uh, Jesus looked at, their humility qualified them. They didn't ask for it. They didn't want it. They didn't even know what was going on half the time. Right? Right? Jesus, what? what's going on? Why are you going here? Why are you telling us to go down here? Who is this, right? Peter, right, saying stuff, and Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan. He called the dude Satan. Like, their humility qualified them. Their obedience qualified them. They kept rocking with Jesus, Right? They kept walking with Jesus. There's a scene where Jesus, uh, I guess he gets fed up, right? And, and, and uh, there's crowds of people and have all these people leave because they didn't want to do the things that Jesus was saying. And Jesus looked at the disciples and said, hey, if you want to go, go, right? Get up out of here, right? And Peter looks at him and goes, where am I going? You have the keys to life staying right here. I don't know where you're going, Jesus, but I'm rocking with you, right? Their obedience to keep walking in that direction, even though they didn't understand. Their curiosity. They were curious about what are you doing? Why did you allow that? Right? Why did you take your time in this? Why is this going crazy? Right? These are questions that we can see throughout Scripture. Right? David, uh, in his long rant with God, goes, "Why are the wicked prospering? God, what are you doing? You ever had some questions for God? You a bunch of them, don't you? Right?" What are you doing? And I want to know. And I'm saying that qualifies you to receive this power. Your curiosity as to what God is doing. And then their love. Their love for Jesus. Jesus, I don't, I don't know. 
I don't understand. I'm not, I'm seemingly not in control. You keep doing all this stuff. I'm going to walk with you and I love you. Jesus takes that, calls, takes these four things, their humanity, their humility, their obedience, their curiosity, and their love, and says, here, boom. You have now all power and authority. And this power was outside of the system. But this power called the system into question, right? What does that mean, right? Right? You're following Jesus. You got this curiosity. You got this love. And Jesus drops it on us, right? Drops it on you, young people. And now you got this thing that's happening outside of the way it should be happening. You're not ordained yet. You haven't been to any seminaries yet, right? You barely read your Bible. Oops. But yet, Jesus, because of your curiosity and love, dropped some power on you. What does that mean? I want you to go to your small groups today with this idea of power. Right? What is this thing that Jesus just gives out? How, how, why is it different than, than power that I can acquire on my own? Right? I didn't ask for this, and I'm not qualified for this, but I am curious. I do love you. I want to keep obeying, and I want to stay in this posture of not me being the center of this Jesus. What does this mean? Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all with me? Y'all ready to go to your groups and discuss this thing? All right, I'll be back in a few hours. <laughs> God bless you.